Welcome back to this video of the FAQ video series on the KNXIP BAOS 777. Another feature of the BAOS is that it can send emails when a predefined trigger is being activated. And how you can enable this email functionality within the web interface you will see in this video. Therefore, as usual, I'm back in the web interface of the BAOS. And before I go ahead and activate such an email trigger, I first of all want to check the general settings for the email transfer. So therefore I go here to settings and then into this folder email. And now here I can specify whether I want to use the default Vineseal server with which you can send up to 10 emails per hour or you can also use a custom email server. If you want to use the wine seal server, well then you don't have to do anything here, but you can specify a sender name, which you will then see in the received email. Otherwise, if you want to use a custom server, you simply activate it here and then you can specify your server settings here. Now in my case here, I want to use the default server and maybe I will give it a name. So for example, BAOS 777. So whenever I receive an email from the BAOS, I will get this name here. Then I click here on save. And then here I can sort of create an address book. So here I will add the emails to which I want to send those emails. I can specify up to five different emails. And later on, when I will activate such a trigger, I can there specify to which email this mail should be sent. Therefore, I will now add two email addresses. Now that I've added those, I also click here on save. Now, before I go ahead, I first of all want to test whether I have set up everything correctly. So here I can test those server settings. And with this button here, I can send a test mail, which I will do now. So as you can see, the BAOS tells me that the test emails have been sent and here you can see within my email folder that I received this email correctly. So therefore I will close it and now we can start to activate email triggers. So therefore I go back to the visualization and now the process is like you would create a timer for a function. So therefore I click on the function name and then on the email menu and now here I can set up multiple email triggers. So in order to add such an email trigger, I click here on add new email and now I can start to configure it. First of all, I want to give it a name. So this name won't appear later on in the email itself, but you will always see this name here in the web interface when you configure this trigger. So I will simply call it smoke alert I will directly enable this trigger and then I can configure it here. So first of all, I configure the data point to which the check or the trigger should be applied. Now here in this case for this function, we only have this one state data point and then I can define the condition and based on the data point type. So whether it is an analog or a binary value, you can then define the condition. So here in this case, I want that the email will get sent when the smoke alert is active. So therefore I set it up here to is equal, not to any, otherwise the email would be sent every time. So I set it to is equal and then to on. Here down below, you can specify the mode on how this condition check should be evaluated. So here I can specify between once on change and on update. Now for this email trigger here, I will leave it to on change and we will later on see what those different modes mean when we take a look at the analog values, because there it is much more clearer what which mode means. Then I can specify the recipients. So here I want to have it to both emails and here down below, I can specify the email content which will be seen when I receive the email. So first of all, the subject now here, in this case, I set it to smoke alert detected. And then in the message and also in the subject, you can also use those macros here. And those macros will get replaced by the bars with either the value of the data point or the ID of the data point. 
So in the message field, I want to have the text smoke alert has been detected and then a line break. And here I want to have the data point ID, then a colon and then the value itself. So with that set up, I can save this email and now this trigger is active. So whenever a smoke alert has been detected, we will get an email. Now, before I test this email trigger here, I want to set up another email. So for the bus load, I want to create an email trigger. Whenever the bus load goes over 20%, I want to receive an email. So the process here is exactly the same. I first of all, click on the function, then on emails. And here I create such a new email trigger. I will give it the name bus load greater 20%. I will enable it immediately. The data point which the trigger should be applied to is the state object. And now here, as it is an analog value, we have more than just is equal and any as a condition. So here we can also differentiate between greater, equal greater, less and equal less, and also is equal and not equal. So as the name suggests here, I want the trigger to be greater than 20%. So greater, then I specify the value here. So 20%. And now here the mode gets important. So therefore let us take a closer look at those modes now. So you can see the different modes here as an image. So an update means whenever a new telegram has been sent to this group object, even if it has the same value, the condition is being checked. And when this condition is true, well, then an email gets sent. So this means that, for example, when the trigger is set to 20% and the value that was sent by a telegram has 35%, well, then the condition is obviously true. So therefore an email gets sent. Then the next telegram also has 35% as a value. Well, then the mode on update still checks this value and as it is true, so the condition applies, another email is sent. On change behaves a little bit differently because with on change, the condition only gets checked when the values are different from each other. So as in the case before, the second 35% telegram wouldn't result in another email being sent. However, when for example, a telegram with 40% gets sent, well then the value is different from the value before. Therefore, a condition check is being done. The condition is true, so another email gets sent. So for unchange, in order to check the condition, the values have to be different, but also here it is possible that multiple emails get sent. And this is where once comes into place. So with once, an email gets only sent once the condition is true. So that means, for example, we still have the trigger to 20 or 30%. Then the first telegram with 35% activates the condition. Therefore, an email gets sent. Then another telegram gets sent, for example, with 40%. But because we set it to the mode once, well, here, no further email is being sent unless the condition is in the meantime false. So that means in order to send another email, the condition, so in this case, greater 20% has to be at least one time false. So at least one telegram has to be sent, which is less than 20%. Then the email can get sent again. So here in this case, I only want an email once the condition has applied. So once the bus load was over 20% and I only want another information that the bus load is again over 20% when it was in the meantime below those 20%. So the value was just fine. So therefore I changed the mode here to once. Then I can define an hysteresis. So this means that here with greater 20%, the condition gets set to true. And when I set it here, for example, the hysteresis to five, well, then the condition gets set to false when the value is below 20% minus five, so below 50%. Then we can also activate a tolerance. So 20% plus minus, for example, 2%. So in this 
range the condition doesn't get triggered but I stick here to zero but I will enable the hysteresis with for example 2% here then I can again define the recipients the subject in this case bus load and now here I can use the value in the subject so for example bus load creator value percent and then the message here is for example high bus load and then dpid so the id of the data point colon and the value and with that we have two email triggers which we now want to test so therefore i go back to the visualization and now i will activate the smoke alert which you can see here now the bus load also goes up to three percent and as you can see here i got the email smoke alert detected smoke alert has been detected and here's the data point id and the current value i will reset it now to false and now i want to test the bus load trigger so therefore i force the bus load to go high by sending telegrams onto this twisted pair line so we have a bus load now of 26 percent and this is definitely enough for the email to get triggered and as you can see here we received the email and the bus load was even higher up to 67 percent you can also see here the message and the data point id again with the value and now even if the value goes up further so i force more telegrams onto the twisted pair line we will notice that no further email will get sent unless the bus load now goes down below the threshold of 20 percent and then it can rise again to trigger a new email. So this is how you can enable email functionality with your BAUS 777.